Our next speaker helped found the American Women Coalition. Let's have a big round of applause for Craig Tapper. This is a story about history lost, of a time when a person could purchase the means of producing electricity from an industry created by inventive genius and a competitive free market. Charles Kettering, America's iconic engineer and second most prolific inventor, began his career by forever changing financial transactions and automobile technology. A Cadillac owner, lighting his weekend cabin with his car, tries to buy a complete Delco auto electric system to free his car up for errands. The light goes on in Dayton. To meet the unmet demand for electricity in rural areas, the Delco Light Farm Electric Plant was introduced in April of 1960. It was an immediate success, and sales quickly surpassed 35,000 by year's end. The gen set would automatically start when the battery was discharged and stop when it was full. The battery would silently supply electricity for several days before the process would repeat. Rural demand for, uh, for flameless lights and running water increased the Delco line to 25 miles plus shallow and deep well pumps. Of course, a complete line of electric appliances was available from Delco and the other major manufacturers. In 1922, sales per surpassed 175,000. In 1929, Alfred Sloan predicted a market, a potential market of 2.5 million units. Within five years, 70 competitors were offering farm electric plants. Within 15 years, the number grew to 150. Competition was on the horizon for a new form of energy, wind. Originally developed to charge a radio battery, larger wind generators would compete or work with a farm electric plant in the windy Great Plains region. Producing five to six generators a week, the Elbers brothers would receive an order for 50,000 units from Zenith Radio. They would become the volume leader with, one, with over one million served. Fascinated by radio on their Delco Light Powered Family Ranch in Montana, Marcellus and Joseph Jacobs developed a large wind machine that was legendary for performance and reliability. For farms and homes, railroads, pipelines around the world, and research stations at the North and South Pole, the smart choice was Jacobs. Ed McCardle's downwind machine eliminated the directional tail vane. The innovative um, power ring increased energy output by 10 to 20%. I'm presently restoring one of these for my house. Armed with a high school education, William Dunn made balancers for the Model T, designed and built a three-passenger airplane, produced his unique wind charger, and received 49 patents. Even General Motors' high-power uh, wind charger, which was developed for use with the Delta Light plant, to, uh, to increase power, extend engine life, and reduce fuel consumption. In 1936, 800,000 rural homes had a farm or wind electric plant. The passage of the, wind electric, or the Rural Electrification Act marked the beginning of the end of the industry. With the demise of the solar or the wind and farm electric industry, solar panels would have been the perfect addition to increase power and expand the market. Today, wind, solar, and biofuel hydroelectric plants 
could easily supply electricity to every rural home and business. If producing your own electricity sounds nice, may I recommend a good book and some interesting websites.